stars fall into seven lettered categories M, K, G, F, A, B, and O. That's according to their surface temperature, but they also differ in other factors, such as mass, luminosity, and abundance in the universe. When astronomers want to find planets that can host life, they usually look for the less massive end of the spectrum, where our own G-type Sun as well as the even less massive K and M-type stars reside. F-types are in the middle of the scale, more massive and hotter than our Sun. They represent 3% of the stars in the Milky Way, as compared with G-class at about 7% and K-class at approximately 12. And then there are M dwarfs, which may account for over 75% of all main sequence stars. F-type stars have a stronger luminosity and their mass is slightly larger than the sun. Also, the solar wind is more powerful. These stars have higher levels of ultraviolet rays than the sun, and as you know, UV rays can alter or destroy the molecules, such as DNA, that are necessary for life to exist. So, why does the title say F-type stars could allow for life to form? Recent studies have shown that F-types likely represent the brightest and hottest main sequence stars that could plausibly allow life to form. Since these stars are hotter, they have a larger habitable zone than the one in the solar system that can support multiple planets. That's the zone where liquid water can exist on an orbiting planet. On a planet too close to the star, with scorching temperatures, water will evaporate. If a planet is too far from its parent star, the temperatures will be too cold, meaning water will freeze. O and A type stars, for example, are vast and extremely hot and live very shortly about millions to hundreds of millions of years for life to stand a chance. Our Sun, a G-type star, should have a correspondingly stable lifetime of about 10 billion years. Meanwhile, F-type main sequence stars are expected to remain stable for about two to four billion years. Life on Earth took about half a billion years to establish itself so the lifetimes of F-type stars on the main sequence appear to be sufficiently long for life to flourish. Even though the high levels of ultraviolet rays can be harmful on planets around F-type stars, the probability of the damage caused by UV rays falls down when you take into account a thick atmosphere or a submersion in water. Life on Earth, for example, could have started beyond the reach of UV rays at hydrothermal vents on ancient ocean floors. Similarly, by living underwater or underground, primitive creatures could survive on a world awash in heavy UV light from an F-type star. The existence of complex life, however, would require the sort of UV protection afforded by an ozone layer which would absorb nearly all of the most dangerous kind of UV rays. Ironically though, the ozone layer was formed thanks to light. Over two billion years ago, early aquatic organisms called blue-green algae, thanks to the process of photosynthesis, created oxygen, which began to accumulate in the atmosphere. UV light is not that bad after all. It could give life a handy spark providing a source of energy. UV light could also be helpful to jumpstart life by providing a highly reactive biochemical environment. The bottom line is that life can be possible on star systems where planets are constantly being bombarded by deadly radiation. Also, as we talked about in a previous video, Life can be different from what we know and it can exist on planets and stars completely different from ours.
don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel and please go support us on patreon.com slash cosmonology.